When you're the first, you're often the worst. That's true of many things, but it's especially true of television. In fact, it's expected that most debut seasons are wonky compared to what comes later, but some do improve more than others. As a result, we have had plenty of beloved great TV shows that turn things around completely after awful, awful first runs. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are eight great TV shows with awful first seasons. Number eight, The Office. The Office is easily one of the most influential and beloved TV shows of the 21st century. I mean, just look at any meme library and you'll see proof enough of that. But the most popular version of The Office was actually an Americanized sister series to a BBC show of the same name. And when you learn that, a lot of season one starts to make more sense. The BBC Office was a completely different animal from what the American NBC version would end up becoming. Being British and uncensored, it was a lot darker with his cynical downright bleak view of people and the British workforce, and no prizes for guessing that it starred Ricky Gervais. Put simply, you didn't laugh so much as you did cringe. And don't get me wrong, it absolutely worked for that series. It's one of my favourite shows of all time, and the American version initially tried to reflect that same distinctly British tone, but just couldn't quite ape it authentically, and by the season's end, it was clear that it needed to go in its own direction if it wanted to stick around longer. So, season 2 onward, it still took the piss out of its cast every chance it got, but it also softened them a lot more than the BBC version was willing to, landing on an ultimately more good feeling tone. For the most part, you wouldn't want to go out for a drink with the UK office cast, but the American lot, well, it'd still be a bit of a nightmare, but you'd at least get some good stories out of it. Also, Michael Scott with the slicked back hair, mm, that just ain't right. Number 7, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know, there's probably a lot of you out there right now in disbelief thinking, wait, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a great show? Josh, what do you want? But that's probably because you, like me, were immediately turned off by its first season. The first big Marvel show set in the MCU continuity, there were huge expectations for ABC's series, which focused on the titular organization and the antics of the now alive Agent Coulson. And initially, it completely buckled under those expectations. The show came across as cheap, unfocused, and tragically predictable in its structure. It also didn't help that it felt at the mercy of the movies it was supposedly tying into either, always playing second fiddle. It took a good while, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did eventually pull it around and become a worthy installment in Marvel's universe. Especially once S.H.I.E.L.D. itself was brought down as it is in the movies, it turned into an entirely different beast. Number 6, Legends of Tomorrow. The DCW shows started out fairly standard, with a show about Green Arrow being followed by a show about The Flash. You know, pretty straightforward. But for their third outing, Greg Belanti and his team decided to go in a slightly more original direction, that being Legends of Tomorrow, a time travel based series centered around giving the side characters they'd been introducing in the two previous shows more to do when they ran out of stuff in the main continuity for them to get up to. However, the first season, as with all of the DCW shows, was by far the rockiest one, with the writers not sure what they wanted the show to be, and so just tried to make it Doctor Who with crappy YA drama. It, um, it didn't work, like, at all. Fortunately, the show went in the exact opposite direction from season 2 onward, making Legends of Tomorrow the wackiest, most bug nutty show in the entire DCCW lineup. While all of the other shows in this stable had trouble with their first seasons, the gap in quality between Legends Season 1 and what they're doing now is the most immense. Number 5, Sonic Boom. Sometimes you don't get to improve after your bad first impression. That's why it's so important to be as good as possible right out of the gate. Unfortunately, Sonic Boom, much like the game it was based on, had no idea what it wanted to be when it started and figured it out too little too late. While the show has undergone some serious reappraisal thanks to people rediscovering it and its genuinely hilarious second season, the consensus remains that the first season is an utter slog that ultimately killed the show despite its later heavy improvements. And that's because the first season is just outright slow, with jokes that are either dragged out too long or not long enough. It's when the show got weird in season 2 that it really found its footing and managed to create a strong cult following. Put simply, if you see a clip of Sonic Boom on YouTube that makes you laugh, chances are very good that it came from season 2. Number 4, Blackadder. When it comes to British comedy royalty, it doesn't get much bigger than Blackadder. 
A series built on reinvention, each of the four seasons jumped around time periods following different incarnations of Rowan Atkinson's titular slimeball. Starting from the Middle Ages and ending in the trenches of World War I, it's fair to say that the comedy covered plenty of ground. However, it only did so by the skin of its teeth, as the first season was a costly bomb, the kind that would doom most other shows entirely. Despite having loads of money thrown at it, and some major comedy names attached to it, the first season didn't hit the audience it needed to justify that cost. It's not really funny, the tone is all over the place, and Atkinson himself clearly hasn't yet figured out what the Blackadder character should even be. So it bombed, and after a bollocking by the BBC, was miraculously given three years to turn things around for season two. With a new lead writer and a new approach to the production, the team embraced the second chance and birthed a British TV mainstay. However, there is a reason you rarely see repeats of the first six episodes on telly. Number three, Supernatural. Supernatural Season 1 is a weird show. While this horror series took the X-Files format of blending Monster of the Week cases with a central mythology, it was the relationship between Sam and Dean Winchester that elevated it to a whole new level of fandom. Hell, just look up any Tumblr post from around 2010 and chances are it'll be about Sam and Dean's family issues than the actual monsters themselves. Consequently, season one suffers from not quite figuring out this dynamic. Actors Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki are undeniably charismatic, but in the early episodes their bond is more a conduit for the cases than the actual story itself. Also, a lot of season one just doesn't hold up creatively compared to the rest. There are some great visuals, but the episodes are extremely formulaic and basic for even 2005. I mean, seriously, just notice how many times in the early episodes an attractive blonde lady gives Sam and Dean a kiss and then needs to be saved. Likewise, there are outright stinker episodes as well, bugs being a particular low point, which combined with the shoddy special effects makes for a show that's way more dated than you remember. There are moments of genius, of course, Faith in particular early on is a winner and the finale is an all-timer, but there's more bad eps than good. Still, it's a huge win that the creative team found its focus from season 2 onwards and made it last for 15 years. Number 2. Parks and Recreation. The first season of Parks and Rec, it pains me to say, just flat out doesn't work at all. There are some good funny episodes and funny moments, but nowhere near the amount that would come later. Now, there are a multitude of reasons for this, from not having the expansive supporting cast members that would come in in later seasons like Ben and Chris, to Mark Brandanowitz in his entirety, but the biggest knock against the first season was how it wrote Leslie Knope. The writers had always intended for Leslie to be a role model, a good, honest woman in politics who always tries to see the best in people. But that is not how people saw her in season one, because that's not how the other characters saw her at all. In season one, there was just this contempt for Leslie among the other characters that made the audience see her as this annoying, naive fool instead of the inspiration that she would later become. In a lot of ways, you could see that the writers wanted her to be something of a female Michael Scott, which just didn't fit right. By changing this small detail then, Parks and Recreation saved itself from obscurity and transformed Leslie into one of the best sitcom characters ever written. Number 1. Star Trek The Next Generation Star Trek shows almost always never start off on the best foot. The best case scenario for this is Deep Space Nine, and even that was mostly just okay. And then you have the infamous first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, which fundamentally just ain't it. The reasons for this vary even more wildly than Parks and Rec though, with there not being a singular reason why TNG's first season sucked. The stories weren't well written, the characters were clumsily written at the best of times, and perhaps most egregious of all, it featured a Riker without a beard, and that's just wrong. Fortunately, the show would get itself on track in its third season, turning itself into the groundbreaking TV series we all know it as today. But for those first one, even two seasons, it was anyone's guess as to how long this reboot was going to last, or whether it deserved to last in the first place. So that's our list, I want to see what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these first runs of great TV shows, and are there any stinkers that I missed off here? Let us know, and while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.